All right, salam tonight, Anais Um, Let's get right into this. Um, once again, Shabbat Shalom. Send that salam. Okay, we open up. Uh, this is Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av. Now, um, first of all, we want to give thanks to Wendem, to uh, Wendem Oludare for reminding I and I and, you know, calling in and checking with I and I about this particular um, holy day, Tisha B'Av, based on the Torah portion, the readings and feedings. Now, it's kind of interesting because um, if you look at this vid down here on the YouTubes, it basically tells us that uh, the 2012, it says the Zion Olympics, I understand the Zion Olympics, it coincides with Tisha B'Av. And Tisha B'Av, it commemorates the destruction of the first and the second temple. The destruction of the first and the second temple. Now, this is what we had looked up before. And if you will, um, check this out for yourself. Tisha, T-I-S-H-A, uh, B apostrophe, A-V, then we put black, right, black, and then write Hebrews, right, black Hebrews in the Google search. And then we click on the Google search right here. And as we scroll down, you can see a couple of vids. Uh, well, actually, see I and I vid right there. This was from um, uh, July 29th, 2011, a 39-minute um, clip. Um, that we uploaded, and that's under when you go Google um, Tisha B'Av and Black Hebrews. Now, first of all, to just get a little bit of groundation, you might um, go to this page right here on Wikipedia, Tisha B'Av. So let's click there for a moment. In fact, um, the evening, this Shabbat, you know, the Shabbat day, and now the Shabbat is over, and actually this is Sunday Eve, and this is the beginning of the ninth or the Tisha, the Tisha Be'av, Be'av in the month of Av, right? Tisha Be'av. Now, Tisha Be'av, it um, it's a it's a time of sorrow. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a fast day in um Judaism, and it's named for the ninth day, which means Tisha in the month of Av or Ab, but in the modern Hebrew, Av, in the Hebrew calendar. Now, the fast commemorates the destruction of both the first um, Mekdes, or the first uh, temple, which was uh, Solomon, Negush, uh, uh, Solomon's temple, and the second temple in Jerusalem, or Yerushalayim, which occurred about 655 years apart, but on the same day, on the same day, and the same date in and according to the Hebrew calendar. Now, as you go further in this particular article right here, this will give you a basic groundation. Now, why is this important to I and I, right? Why is this particular holy day important to I and I? So, Get an overview and check this out because this is basically to commemorate the destruction of both the first and the second temple. Now, the second temple was in 70 A.D. Now, all who basically have a basic groundation and foundation, well, let's go to this right here. Um, you remember the book by Rudolf Windsor from Babylon, right, from Babylon to Timbuktu. Now, there's a... <laughs> Oh, man, there's a mega connection, you understand, in this for I and I, for I and I peoples. Now, no doubt you recognize from Babylon to Timbuktu, right, from Babylon to Timbuktu, this particular Amazon. Well, it's on the Amazon, but the book is actually by, hey, here's, here's the cover right here. I think perhaps there's a, let's see if we can get this a little bit larger right here, from Babylon to Timbuktu. Right, there's, so there's some different versions, it's a new release right here from Babylon to Timbuktu, so go check it out. Um, definitely you need to get a copy of that particular book. It's one of the foundational books 
for we as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. A really truly excellent book by um I and I brother Rudolph um Windsor. Right? Rudolph Windsor. This is the cover right here, Rudolph R. Windsor. So you probably have seen this cover. Hopefully you've seen this cover around and you no doubt have seen us speak of this particular um, book right here, this particular volume. Now, let's just go to the other search window while this comes up right here. This kind of gives you a foundation of why, you know, who we are. You see, our identity in Jah, our identity in the Moshiach, in the Black Messiah, our Lord and Savior, Adonenu, Yeshua, our Moshiach, is very, very important. So while this cover here loads right here, let us look over here. And there's some other links right here on Tisha B'Av and the three weeks, right? This is some of the art out there. Um, I think this is the second temple. Now, 70 A.D., when the temple was destroyed, first of all, the Roman historian Tacitus says that the, that the um, Jews of the time of the destruction of the second temple were of the race of the Ethiopum prolum, which means of the race or the seed of the Ethiopians. Now, if you um, check out this, this is some of the art out there, but this right here shows how they, you know, how the Romans laid siege to Jerusalem. Now, this is according to the prophecy of the Moshiach, who we accept and who we know as the Moshiach, Yeshua. Yehoshua, Gitachin Jesus Christos. Now, the connection with the black Jews or the connection with who we are is very clear and evident. So when you get a foundation and a groundation, check out this particular book right here, From Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolph R. Windsor. Every Hebrew should at least have a copy of this book as well as um, Valley of the Dry Bones. You know, and these are basic foundational um, texts, documents, and, and evidence for who we are as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. Let us open this page once again right here um, and go back to our original search that we want to update you with. So this particular um, commemoration for some of the... Um, European Jews, you understand, in uh, Judaism, this is a, a day that is very uh, uh, religiously, you understand, commemorated. But now what's very interesting with the London Olympic Games, you know, there's a, <laughs> there's a very interesting and a prophetic um, connection to that. We was catching a couple of pages out here on the YouTube. So what we want to do is kind of give you some of the basic foundational references. So you can see we went to the Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia on Tisha B'Av, which we have open right here. So this is one particular, um, you know, this is the prophecy of Yeshua HaMoshiach where he says that one stone will not be laying upon another stone. You understand? Um, so there's a lot of, when we read, remember that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. While the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So now this page right here, which is basic um, modern Judaism, but in some of the, the basic facts, you understand the basic biblical facts and some of the basic facts, it is right and exact and it provides a good foundational study for those who are the Adis, um, um, Met, or Metoch, Metoch, Metchiwoch, the, the newcomers, for those who are the Adis, um, Dekamesmur, those who are Adis, you know, Hadis, those who are new to this, you understand, to help ones understand, well, what's the relationship with Tisha B'Av? And once again, um, Amasagnalo, Wendem, Oludare, for the reasoning on um, the Tisha B'Av. Because at first we were saying, oh, that's the destruction of the second temple. But then we remember, we said, wait, 
What about the destruction of the first temple? Now, check this out right here in some of this um, information right here. So it's the ninth of Av, right? So we move right down here, the 655 years apart. So we have 70 A.D. and roughly, I think it was 586, 586 B.C. Now, although primarily meant to commemorate, commemorate the destruction of the temples, both the Temple of Solomon, the first temple, and then the, temp the second temple, which was also called Solomon's Temple, but actually it was the temple that the Indumean or the Edomite Herod, who thought of himself as king of Judah or king of the Jews. Really, when we start to check this out, we can see where the, um, the Khazars and where the modern um, European Judaism kind of comes into this mix. You understand? Even through the Khazarian or the Indumean, you understand? Link and connection. And after the original Ethiopian Hebrews in 70 AD, you understand? Even from Jewish resources like uh, Josephus, Antiquity of the Jews, and much of that is covered in this particular document right here. From Babylon to Timbuktu, it covers much of these basic, you know, these basic elements to show how from Babylon, remember Babylon is, is roughly the time of uh, 586 and about 600 and roughly 55 years later, in 70 A.D., the, the second temple um, or Herod's temple was destroyed by the Romans. So the first one was by Babylon, the Babylonians. Right, roughly 586 or so um, BC, and then 655 years, roughly later, in 70 AD, on the very same day, the ninth of Av. Now, ones would still say, "Well, why is this important to us as Black Hebrews?" It's very important when you know who you be, not know who you are, but when you know who you be. This is very, very important. So, the what would be known as a Saturday evening, you know, when the sun, as they say, goes down, or when the shadow state appears, to all through Sunday and to the first day of the week, which is Ihud or Sunday, till the sun going down is usually commemorated as a time of fasting. The Book of uh, Lamentations, the Lamentations of the Prophet um, Adamius, you know, saying, is also read. Or, or chanted as well. Now, if you look at this particular article right here, and this is under the search, Tisha B'Av and Black Hebrews. Tisha B'Av, Black Hebrews. When you, when you click on this link right here, the PDF, it speaks about the meaning. See this right here, the meaning, right, of Tisha B'Av to us as black Jews. What is the meaning of this to us as black Jews? So there's an article right here. Right, um, from a black rabbi, as they say, but one of our Ethiopian Hebrew rabbis that goes um, comes from that 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 tradition. You understand, roughly in the time of the 1930s, and Rabbi Matthews or Wentworth Arthur Matthews and the Commandment Keepers um, congregation of Harlem. You understand, which some say was a black Mecca, but actually it was like a black Jerusalem. And even the history of that particular um, congregation, you understand, which has gone through its own divisions, and, you know, um, you know, the devil will seek to tear everything down because the devil doesn't want the black Messiah to rise up. But it's interesting because on another link we get to see that that particular um, congregation and it was since the temple again, the third time was destroyed, and the date that our black Hebrew um, brothers, the Ethiopian Hebrew brothers and sisters of the Commandment Keepers Congregation of Harlem, New York, that historic um, congregation that, that, that recognized that Kedemawi Haile Selassie is Ainai, true king, is a true king of Israel, the king of Zion, he's Moa on Bessas and Negeta Yehuda, and according to the black Jews of Harlem, the book by Howard um, Broach, um, that Haile Selassie I, uh, according to some, is covertly a Hebrew, but after all, Moa on Bessas and Negeta Yehuda, so Ethiopia's true story, it's true, Barry, you understand, know but right here, this, this article is a very important article, and I would definitely, um, ask you to, you know, uh, link it, 
You know what I'm saying? Check it out. Let's just open it up right here so we can go through it a little bit. We shared a little bit of this um, with I and I and Brethren who, who um, reasoned with us a little bit earlier about this particular day. He asked I and I, is this a holiday? And at first I and I said, um, I mean, besides the Shabbat day, it's a Shabbat day, yes, but not so much a holiday in the usual sense of holiday. It, it, it's a time of... Um, you can say righteous sadness for I and I, and, and righteous remembrance as well, especially to us as um, black Jews, as Ethiopian Hebrews, which is the alternative name for I and I and I and I peoples. Now, this article right here is a black rabbi's perspective of the meaning of Tisha B'Av to us, to I and I, a black Rabbi's perspective, and this is by Rabbi or Rebbe uh, Shlomo Ben uh, Levi or Ben Levi, Ben Levi. And this is go through this a little bit. It says, for black Jews, for we as Ethiopian Hebrews and true elect Rastafari, the meaning of Tisha B'Av is never far away. It is not merely a remote holiday commemorating the destruction of the temple in 586 B.C. And in 70 A.D., the fact that the temple was destroyed on the same day, the 9th of Av. Now, notice that the Zion Olympics, this, this Olympics in London, it actually began yesterday on the 27th. So you notice that this particular year, some, some actually are commenting on this on, on some other um, prophetic um, um, and Messianic uh, uh, Christian and Hebrew um, Jewish pages, actually. You know, are commenting on the fact that this is the Babylon, you know, this is the Babylon Zion, or this is, this is the Zion Olympic Games. And once again, Babylon has conquered Zion. You know, was, and when you look at the date, it, it, it began, the Olympics began on 27th of July, right? And Tisha B'Av is the ninth, the Tisha of the month of Av. So both from the, from the Hebrew or the Judaic, the Jewish calendar, as well as from the Gregorian calendar, we have the number nine. And I caught something just recently. I saw um, um, Mitt Romney, I mean Mitt Romney, he was coming off the plane in, 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 in Israel, the state of Jezreel, and as he's walking down the plane behind him, and some of you can see that clip where he's coming off the plane with his wife, he's walking down, you know, walking down the um, what do you call a ladder or whatever like that? Yeah, you know. Um, and behind him was, uh, was, was like a sign that said nine. So we saw another nine V. And remember what Romney, Mitt Romney, Romney had said about the whole Olympics and everybody was all, ooh, why you say that, such and such and such, right? But let's just understand there's, there's, a, there's a link in this real time right now, both to the, the other Jews you know, no, the OJs, the, the European Jews, the Khazars, and those who are running the modern state of um, Jezreel today. And also you have to see what's going on with them and the Olympics because they want to have something to honor or uh, commemorate, you know, a minute or a moment of silence or something like that to commemorate what happened in Munich. You seen that movie, Munich? Munich is, 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 is a pretty, I, I like the movie, person, that Munich movie where the Mossad or some of the um, Israeli agents go hunt down, you know, some of the Palestinians or others uh, allegedly who have, you know, killed them or who have terrorized them. You know what I'm saying? My brothers, you know what I'm saying? Black Hebrews, black Jews, Ethiopian Hebrews, elect Rastafari, I and I day, you know what I'm saying, is come, but recognize this, I and I have overcome. Recognize that. Now, first of all, we have to get our house in order. You understand? Know so it's not just about the zeal. You understand? Know but we have to have that zeal based on, 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 on knowledge. You understand? Know it has to be based on the knowledge of the Bain Ha Elohim, our Black Lord and Savior, the Black Messiah, that the Antichrist, Cointel Pro et al. and Company have sought. You understand? Know to suppress and to stop the rise 
of, but they can't stop the rise of the son of Jah. You understand? You have to recognize that this is why we went through some of the uh, teachings on Jah people destined to reign. You understand? And even touching on those prophetic areas of scripture like the, like the uh, epistle of, uh, first epistle of John. You know, in chapter 2, very, very important, my brothers and sisters. But the fact that the temple, or both temples, the first one, Solomon's, and the second one, Herod's, built in the style of Solomon, you understand, know, because those Jews trust in Solomon, you understand, know, it was destroyed on the same day, the 9th of Av. Now, this suggests says a rabbi or a rabbi Shlomo ben, Le ben Levi, this suggests that it was not an accident. Mm -mm. Now, is it an accident that the commandment keepers congregation too? You know what I'm saying? I heard that either the building was sold or there was some split or division after um, Rabbi Matthew's death and that that was sealed up too on the very same day, Tisha B'Av, you understand? I'll get that information to the eye of them, but it's, but it's out there. Now, this link is actually from blackjews.org, so please check it out for yourself. So this was an accident. Just as lightning does not strike the same spot twice, calamity does not follow a people by coincidence. See, this is what the Negroes, blacks, and coloreds don't get, the lost sheep. You understand? Of the day to Israel. They don't recognize that. For us, you understand? Recognize I and I identity. You recognize who we are in Jah, in Jah's plan of salvation. For us, destruction, captivity, and the loss of our ancestral heritage. You understand? Our, our heritage, our divine heritage has been a recurring and a defining experience. This is how we know who we are, and we give so much thanks to I and I, brother Rudolph R. Windsor, for this book, A History of the Ancient Black Races, including and especially the black Hebrews from Babylon to Timbuktu. Now, in this particular article of why, why is it, you know what I'm saying, why is this um, important to us? You know what I'm saying, why is Tisha B'Av Right? Why is Tisha B'Av? What is the meaning of it to us? You know, and based on this black rabbi's perspective, let us read on. The reason a permanent homeland with one unified temple has been so important to the Jewish, the Judah, you know, saying the Judaic people, you know, what I'm saying is because for most of our history. Our story, we have been a nomadic, differentiated from within, segregated from without, from the time that God, that Jah, told Abram to get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house, according to Berashit 12 and 1 or Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. We have been a people in search of a home and new set of family relations. The very word Ibri, Hebrew, in its most basic definition, it connotes this transitory and peripatetic trait. The forces that push us in the direction of Jah. You understand? The, what are the forces that have pushed us? in this direction to seek the King of Kings and the Moshiach, to seek Yahweh and his Moshi, Negus Moshi, and towards each other, you know what I'm saying, in that, in that common, you know what I'm saying, in that common unity, in that community, in that common wealth, and conversely, away from Jah and against each other. So if we look at the forces that push us towards Jah, and towards each other, and conversely, vis-a-vis, -vis, the forces that push us away from Jah and against each other are like the current of a tide, a seemingly endless cycle. From the completion of the temple by Negush uh, Solomon in 953 B.C. until the division of Israel following his death was a very brief moment, only 
23 years when a people, when the people, the nation, and the temple of the Mechadas, the Beta Mechadas of Israel stood harmoniously. This location seems to be, I will add, the, the Rebbe says here, the black Rebbe says here, this location is the norm of our existence. Well, I say this is, seems to be, because it also has to do with our obedience, disobedience. See, in obedience, we are pushed towards John and towards each other. In disobedience, you know what I'm saying, we are pushed away or we pull away from John and we divide. You know what I'm saying, so we can look at ourselves individually in the family, collectively, and see which direction are we moving. Now, history teaches us that internal divisions lead to greater separation and alienation. You know what I'm saying? Internal divisions. Are you listening, so-called EWF members of the Federation? You know are you listening? History should teach us that. Right? It is interesting that we often start with the destruction of the temple in 586 B.C. by the Babylonians rather than the loss of ten tribes, ten of the tribes of Israel during the Assyrian exile, which occurred over a century earlier in actually 722 B.C. Is the loss of a building, Beta Meknes, more important than the loss of, all, uh, of, of most of the Hebrew people. I'll say he seems to be off on this Jewish, you understand, level. But the, the Hebrew people. Or is it that in prioritizing the oppression of the Ayus, of the Ayhud, are want to do? We are less sympathetic to the tribes carried away in the Syrian exile because the northern kingdom had separated itself. And therefore, to some of us and to many, quote, it deserved, end quote, its destruction more than those lost in Babylonian exile. You know, and this asks the question, why didn't the kingdom of Judah, why didn't the kingdom of Yehuda? Some may ask, do more to help the Beta Israel, the ten northern tribes who were fleeing death and captivity. Now, as we mourn, we yes, and remember and, 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 and mourn or lament to some extent and, and, and fast on the Tisha B'Av, let us remember all the victims, you understand, of the Beta Israel exile. And let us take responsibility for their descendants wherever they may be. Now, Psalm 137, 1 to 4, it says, By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars, the poplar tree, we hung our harps. But now remember in chattel slavery, you know what I'm saying, we were hung off of those poplar trees. Remember the song Strange Fruits? For there our captors, our enslavers, slave Masa, ask us for songs. Music industry. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They want us to sing happy songs. Like they still want to sing happy songs. They said, Sing us one of those songs of Zion. You know, sing us one of those nigger songs. Sing us one of those black songs. You understand? How can we sing the songs of Yahweh, of Jah, while in a foreign land? That's the question mark. You understand? That's the question mark. How can we? Now, here's some notes down here, right? Let's just go here. So, on Tisha B'Av, we consider how all these exiles are connected. That's what we have to meditate. How are all these exiles connected? Should we start from, as, it, as we would say, from Babylon to Timbuktu? You know what I'm saying? How are all of these exiles connected? You know what I'm saying? What is the connection? I want to check this one right out here if you, if you see this, right? And I notice when... Um, yeah, Romney, 
All right, so this 2012 Zion Olympics coincides with Tisha B'Av. Coincides with Tisha B'Av. Isn't that very, very interesting? Did that just happen that way? You know what I'm saying? That the 2012 Zion Olympics coincides. Let's click on here and bring that up. That it coincides with Tisha B'Av. Coinky dink. Not very, very likely. So it's on Tisha B'Av that we have to consider, that we have to think about. How are all these exiles, you understand, the various points in time that our people and different portions of our people were taken to the east, to the west, to the north, and those who fled into exile in the south? You know what I'm saying? And when we look at Africa, it's very, very interesting. The Yoruba people, they have a connection with 70 AD. The Igbo, the Igbo people, they have a connection with 70 AD. The Lemba people, they have a connection with 70 AD. The um, Beta Israel, or so-called Falasha people of Ethiopia, they have a connection with 70 AD. We over here, Judah, the so-called African-American Negro, you understand, or black or so-called African-American, we also have a connection with 70 A.D. So here, this is this video right here. We're going to check this out a little bit more, but we had caught this right here, and we said, what, this um, so-called would-be king right here, he has, a, he has a beard. What's up with that? You understand, what's up with that? So we have 2012 Zion Olympics, coincide with Tisha B'Av, the destruction of the temples. Now, they say down here to um, read the info. So let's go there and read the info. Now, if you look at that logo, if you look at the Olympics logo, it clearly spells out Zion. And now to recognize that it begins, right, it coincides and begins on the Tisha B'Av. You understand the commemoration, the destruction of the temple, temples in Jerusalem, the first and the second. Mm. It says, if you ever listen to the programs that we did with uh, Rick Clay, okay, this is who is this, uh, DJ's Northwest, we know that we've been following the 2012 Zion Olympics connection closely. You can listen to all four hours that we did with Rick Clay in 2008 in case you missed it. You might just check out some of it, right? In case you missed it, right? Um, even Iran is boycotting the 2012 Olympics because of the blatant Zion symbolism. So adding to the pile of connections between the 2012 Olympics in London and the aspirations of Zion, or at least the aspiration of one form of Zion or Zionism and the symbolic rebuilding or destruction of the temple, Another tidbit has now come to light thanks to an email from a listener. It turns out that Tisha B'Av, it, it falls on the 27th of July this year. Well, others actually say it falls on the 28th um, uh, evening of the 28th to the evening of the 29th. You know what I'm saying? So actually, um, Sunday Eve to um, Monday Eve, if you over it like that, or Saturday night to the Sunday night as in, from the Western um, Gentile perspective. But anyway, let's just follow up with this. So it falls on the 27th of July this year, 2012, and this is the same day that the London Olympics opening ritual ceremony takes place. But if you notice something, it seems like they moved it. You know what I'm saying? Seems like they moved it or something like that. I'm not too sure about that. Maybe it's just the the the, the time apart across the pond or whatever. The um, how many hours is it? About five or so hours difference, right? But anyway, it says um. So in the eyes of the world, we'll be on London on the 27th of July, 2012, for the opening of the XXX. Olympiad, in case you don't know your Roman numerals, but XXX is 30. But then if you recognize the XXX symbology, right, if you look at the XXX symbology, you know that the Romans 
They also crucified people on axes like that. So the cross could be as a plus sign, stood up as a plus sign, or, and often, it was as this particular X, as an X sign. So the X is also the cross. So remember when, when the Moshiach, the black Moshiach, Yeshua, was crucified, there were what? There were three, right? There were three crosses. Yeshua was in the center, and the two thieves you know, were that either or side. So just that connection, too, is very, very interesting. Now, Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, is an annual fast in Judaism, you know, and it's named for the ninth day, Tisha of the month of Av in the Hebrew calendar. Now, the fast commemorates the destruction of both the first and the second temple in Jerusalem, or Jerusalem, 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 which occurred about 655 years apart, but on the same Hebrew calendar date. Now, London, many say, right, is the so-called New Jerusalem, you understand, know quote, unquote, you understand, know is a New Jerusalem, not, not the true Jerusalem, not the true New Jerusalem, but this is, this is more part of this um, uh, counterfeit conspiracy, if you understand, you know understand, of Babylon, right, Zion, so the street plan, right, now Stratford in London is to become host to the Olympic Village, which is undergoing massive regeneration due to the project. The site was claimed to be the last area of suitable wasteland in London or London. Pretty lucky, eh? Or maybe it was left alone for years for this very reason. The writer of this article says that he chooses the latter, and I would second that motion right there. And so to the point, take a look at the Olympic site with the Google Maps road view. On first glance, it looks like any other map view. But um, persevere. Take a closer look at the road names. And then there's some other links down here which... You know, we didn't get even an opportunity to check this, but when this came up, we saw it right there, and this also connects. We're seeing a lot of connection, you understand, know with this, both for, um, both for us, you understand, know as well as them. So we're going to check this, this vid out a little bit more. So you can, you know, you can see this Z-I-O-N very clearly, Z-I-O-N within the logo. You can see here the so-called prince, he has a beard, you understand, which is often not very, very characteristic for the European Greco-Roman tradition. You know what I'm saying? But it's also very interesting when we put all of this um, together. You know what I'm saying? The conspiracy, the counterfeit conspiracy, right? Now, let's just kind of pull all this together and continue with what we were saying right here for us, all right? That we need to consider how all these exiles, you know what I'm saying, and how our exile. You know what I'm saying? As the black Hebrews, the black Jews, the Ethiopian Hebrews are connected with this Tisha B'Av. Now, each blow to the, the, the Hebrew people, to we as Hebes or Ethio Hebes, Ethio Hebians, you know what I'm saying? Ethio Hebrews, right? Sent refugees into the world to continue their wandering, as it were, alone. You know what I'm saying? This is what has divided. You know what I'm saying? It has divided and conquered. You know what I'm saying? Almost in that sense of like the like Osiris in a sense has been cut up. You know what I'm saying? Desiccated. You know what I'm saying? Many of the dispersed of Israel, they naturally found themselves in the nearest parts of Africa. Yes. The disperse of Israel naturally did. Tacitus, the Roman historian, Josephus, and so many other links already make that very clear. It's a shame that some of y'all might be hearing about this for the first time or maybe only have heard about it recently through this or other ministries, right? But over the centuries, Hebrews from these locations, right, black Jews, Ethiopian Hebrews, followed established trade routes as either the merchants, their human cargo, or as willing travelers 
to the more distant kingdoms in southern as well as western Africa. It's very good that this uh, Rebbe here, this black rabbi, is making that connection. You know, it was while reading and we was wondering whether he was going to get there with it. So he's basically affirming, you know, saying what those of us who have studied this for years and ones who have documented to like um, Rudolf R. Windsor makes that connection. You know, it's in the history of the ancient black races, different r black peoples, including the black Hebrews, all right, including the black Hebrews. So let's go into this, let's continue in this article right here. So he says that, and it's interesting that over the centuries that the Jews, the Ayus, the Ayhuds, you know, saying, from these locations in the nearest parts of Africa, they had followed established trade routes, either because they were merchants, you know, saying, like Tamrin, with whom the Queen of Sheba and her only son Menulik, or the Kuvrat Neges, the story of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, or in other times as their human cargo, you understand, or as willing travelers, ones that were willing to make that travel to more distant kingdoms in southern and western Africa, such as the Yorubas, acknowledge, and even many of the Egbo or Igbo people, some say Hebrew people of West Africa, also acknowledge. So this is part of our suppressed memory. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is in our DNA. The patterns of assimilation that have been so carefully documented among the Jews of Europe, they actually repeat themselves in Africa. So when we look at the Jewish story, you know what I'm saying, in Europe, or what is called the Jewish story in Europe, we actually, as so-called above in the north, below the Mediterranean, in the south, in Africa, we find those, those same carefully documented um, patterns of assimilation, i.e., the Jewish or the, the Judah-ish identity is lost through a combination of religious suppression, as we see even going on in certain parts of West Africa and Mali, you know what I'm saying, and even in Nigeria, you know what I'm saying, with um, the Mohammedanism and Islamofascism, you know what I'm saying. So a combination of religious suppression, forced conversion, and intermarriage with whatever the dominant people or population happen to be. You know what I'm saying? By the 15th century, only a few but highly distinctive elements of their Judaism or of Afro-Judaism remain such as the practice of circumcision among some tribes, prohibitions against the eating of um, chazir, you know what I'm saying, or pork, agricultural festivals that correspond to Sukkot and uh, Shavuot, and the presence of Hebrew, Ibrahian or Ibrahist uh, Allah's Hebrew words for God, Elohim. In West Africa, we have Olu, you understand, Elu, Hailu, you understand, we see those links right there, um, Elohim, you understand, Hayalan, these various different Hebrew or uh, Hebraic words. Remember, Hebrew is Afro Shemitic, so that is a big point. I don't know if the uh, Rabbi Rabbi Shlomo is going to point out that in this article, but that's also a link. So these Hebrew words for God in several of the African languages basically point to that origin, that, that Afro-Shemitic, you know, in that Hebraic origin. Hence, following this line of logic, historical evidence, and scriptural prophecy, it is plausible if not highly, overwhelmingly probable, you know what I'm saying, and certain and accurate and true, I mean, that a certain number of Africans of Jewish descent were captured in the Arab, in the Arab slave trade, and then European slave trade that continued for over 500 years and resulted in over 12 million Africans, and that number sounds very conservative, being taken to the Western Hemisphere or in the Americas. You understand? In the Americas and the Caribbean. There, they were forced to worship alien gods you know what I'm saying? And cut off from 
El Elohe Israel, Baruch Hu, the God of Israel. Now, black Jews, we as Ethiopian Hebrews, true Rastafarians, especially us as Afro-American Rastafari, we recognize our Ethiopian Hebrew foundation. So, black Jews, right, we know what it means to um, lose touch, if you will, with your land. We, we as Ethiopian Hebrews, we know what it's like to uh, lose touch uh, with your people. We as Ethiopian Hebrews or Ethiohebs, you know saying, as, as uh, Beta Israel, we know what it's like to lose touch with your language. We as um, the Falashas of the West in this Western exile, you said we know what it's like to lose touch with your culture. And we know as black Hebrews and Jews and, and Beta Israel, Falashas of the West, all these bywords and other words, you understand, that basically describes John's word. We know what it's like to lose touch with our story. You understand? Getting caught up in his story. So Tisha B'Av is very, very important to us, to I and I and I. It reminds I and I of the harshest consequences of prolonged exile. It is not the vengeance uh, of an angry God. It is the just punishment of and to a backsliding people, a privileged people, quote, Israel is my firstborn, is my son, even my firstborn, Yahweh says. So he says, say it to, said God to Pharaoh. That's what God said to Pharaoh in Exodus 4 and 22. You understand? That Israel is my son. Even my Horus, even my Cheru, even my firstborn, said Elohim, said the Elohim Moshe, Musa, remember Moses was a god to Pharaoh, so Moses said this to Pharaoh, Exodus 4 and 22, yet we, 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 right? Yet I and I and I and I, his chosen people, the Cheruyan, the chosen people, the elect people, we strayed from his commandment, you know what I'm saying? And as a reward for our transgression, we lost what was most precious and dear. Now, what this particular um, Hebrew brother, some of our Hebrew brothers and sisters, they're more Old Testament. They haven't quite rightly received the Moshiach as Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? They might recognize that he's black, so forth and so on, because that's very clear in the identity of the first century Israelites, especially those who were massacred and killed and some went into exile and others enslaved. We know what Tacitus, the Roman historian, said, that the Jews were of the Ethiopian problem, were of the race or the seed of the Ethiopian, which is a very clear and evident um, testimony to them being what we would call today black. Now, this long nightmare of separation, this long nightmare of estrangement, should make those of us who have been found, those of us who have returned, to those of us who have restored, those of us who have repented and been born again more thankful, more appreciative, appreciate love, and more grateful to the King of Kings and his Christ. So on the commemoration of Tisha B'Av, it recalls all the suffering of our people, of Beta Israel, in the ancient land of Israel. It embodies the persecution of our people in Europe, and we're not just speaking about the so-called converted Khazars, but them too, but also those who were before them, the black Hebrews, Jehovah's saying, in Europe, Jehovah's, and it includes over 2,000 years of painful wandering and wandering. Mm -hmm. It connects the, the 
the servitude or the slavery of Egypt, the, the, the bondage, as it's called, in, in Egypt with the European slave trade, the Nile, the Mississippi, and the oceans that connect them across time and space are filled with the tears of our people. You know, we hear about the, progr the, 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 pol the, the, the pogroms of Russia, are bond to us, to the state-sponsored slaughters that occurred in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921, in, in, in Chicago, Illinois in 1919, in um, Wilmington, North Carolina in 1898, in uh, Rosewood, Florida in, in 1923. And, and, and Springfield, through Springfield, Illinois, in 1908. These sites mark some of the places on the map of our humanity, of our human history, where our people shed their blood. The once lost but now found Beta Israel, the so called Afro American Negro, who is Judah, Yehuda in exile. The Warsaw Ghetto, we hear about that in Poland, right? You know, that's inextricably bound in our souls with the ghettos. The, you know, the ghettos, the ghettos of Watts, of Detroit, of Newark, of Harlem, and even of, of Brooklyn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, hollow places places that have been hollowed and, and set apart, you understand, by um, our more affluent brothers, you understand, um, the so-called European Jews, places like Auschwitz, um, uh, Treblinka, um, Buchenwald, or Buchenwald, which are remembered for the suffering that our people endured there also during the Holocaust. You see, this stands this stands in our memory along with the forgotten places where our um black Jewish ancestors were were taken into captivity at at Gory Allen, Senegal, at, at, at Bridgetown, Barbados, at, at, at Kingston, Jamaica, and at, at, at Jamestown, Virginia. You know, history, but more importantly, our story, it records that the European slave trade in Africa, it began, some say, on August 8th, 1444. Now, traditionally, Tisha B'Av occurs between late July and early August. It is difficult to know for certain you know, the exact um, date of Tisha B'Av in the year 1444 due to um, complex changes that occurred in the Gregorian calendar over time and other assumptions that must be made in these calculations. Yet, the period includes a time frame that is normally considered sacred, Kedus, Kodesh, Kaddish, during the proper observ observance of Tisha B'Av. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 30 to verse um, 64. Um, just, just notice this, uh, a little quote right here, right? Uh, or 30 mainly and verse 64. It says, Thou shalt betroth a wife, like uh, get ready to get married to a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Have we forgotten slavery? Have we forgotten the days of, of, of slavery? Have we forgotten? Thou shalt build a house. Who do you think built all those fine southern those fine southern homes? Who do you think built them? John says, Thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to another people. That's why most of you have still got other people's names still on you. You understand? And thine eyes shall look and, and fill with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hands. 
Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. And Yahweh, yod Hey, wow Hey, shall scatter thee among all peoples. That's why we're, we're, we're everywhere. You know, we have people everywhere. From one end of the earth, even to the other. And even from one end of this land, and I'm talking about the Americas, not just the United States, not just the corporation. I'm talking about Americas, you know, from North America to Central America to South America, all the way up to Canada and to all the little islands here and there and everywhere. We've been scattered. And there thou shalt serve other gods, like Kaiser Borgia, like Caesar Borgia, like the blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. You understand? Which is a counterfeit. You understand? And that's a counterfeit, I say, you understand, of our black Lord and Savior, Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Our fathers didn't know no Kaiser Borgia, you know what I'm saying, as no ma Messiah, as no Moshiach, yet they were forced to say Masa, you know what I'm saying, a pun on Mashi, you know what I'm saying, on the word for Messiah in the pure language. So we have gone and served of the gods which thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood, right, even wood and stone, serving other gods. You want to see what these other gods are? You already know what these other gods are, don't you? You already know what the wood and the stone are. Let's see if we got some coins right here to show you about these other gods. You understand these other gods? Let's just give you a sample of the other gods. These are the other gods, right? The wood and the stone. These are the other gods. You understand? These are the other gods. We've gone from the one, the Ahadu Amlak, from the Shema Yisroel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad, you understand, to this one in God, right, in so-called God, and God, you understand, God is the name of an idol, a troop, a legion. God, look it up. You understand? And stone. Where do you think this comes from? Stone. You understand? The coins come from stone. And, right? The paper from wood. Right? So these are the other gods that our people, you understand, have learned to serve. You understand? They have learned to love. You understand? Have learned to give their life for and have learned to take life for. You see why this is a time of, of lamentation, even a time of repentance? Tisha B'Av, you know, is not a faint memory for us as once lost but now found Beta Israel. Sometimes it's such a deep memory we don't even sometimes want to remember it, but we must remember it. It is an ongoing reality as the majority of those Jews who were lost and exiled over the centuries especially the black Jews, are, are still lost, are still in exile. We remember them. We mourn for them. We pray for their return or for repatriation to come out of Babylon, to call for ourselves a place in the sun and work daily for the regathering of the entire scattered Beta Israel, the entire scattered house of Israel. On this and every Tisha B'Av, we pray that the promise of a merciful God will soon be fulfilled. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 to 4. Quote, when all these blessings and curses I have set before you come upon you, and you take them to heart, you, you be conscious of this. Wherever Yahweh, your Elohim, Heka, your Elohim disperses you among the nations, among whichever foreign Gentile nation you've been dispersed in the east, the west, the north, or the south. Then Yahweh, Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey, Eloheka, your Elohim will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you. And here's the key. 
brothers and sisters, gather you again from all the nations, from all the nations, from some of the nations, from all the nations where he scattered you. Even if you have been banished to the most distant land under the heaven, from there, Yahweh, Eloheka, your Elohim, Baruch, who, blessed be he, will gather you and will bring you back. Amen and amen, my brothers and sisters. This is a very, very good article right here, and I truly highly recommend this right here. There's a footnote here we want to read. It said, the most comprehensive study of this pre-Islamic Jewish presence is by Joseph J. Williams in his book, Hebrewisms of West Africa, From the Now to Niger with the Jews, New York, Biblio, and Tannen, and it was published, get the year, 1930. You know what I'm saying? 1930, the crowning of the king of kings of Moa, Anbesa, Zeimah, Negeda, Yehuda, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi, Haila Shalase, Haila Shalase the first, Shiyuma Egeziavi, the elect of God, Nagusha Nagesh, the Ethiopia, the king of kings of Ethiopia. He is also the king of Zion and the king of Israel. Those are his titles. Now, if you check a book, another book out called um, The Black Jews of Harlem by, the, by one of the major, um, the major um, forces, I would say, in that sense, or the major personalities, rather, of the movement of the black Jews, black Hebrews of and in the Americas. You know what I'm saying? He testifies, and his testimony is, is, is worth um, um, reading and studying and sharing with others. Also see, and he also quotes or uh, refers to Windsor R. Windsor Rudolph R. from Babylon to Timbuktu, first revised, right, edition, Philadelphia, Windsor's Golden Series Publications, and that was published in 1969. So you have to recognize that... Much of this information has been out, you understand, for for at least 70 years. It's really more than 70 years, you understand. And, and now with all this Internet and so forth and so on, we can actually, you understand, we can actually um, 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 refer to these things and get more accurate information about all of this. Um, brothers and sisters, um, I just wanted to put a word on Tisha B'Av, what Tisha B'Av means to I and I as elect Rastafari, you understand, as, as Afro-American, you understand, or Judahites, so-called American Negroes and blacks and colors, what this really, really means to I and I. And there's a couple other pages here that we also um, want to um, point to. There's this one right here, which is interesting, um, the Feast of, of Weeks, you understand, which speaks on the, um, the African um, Hebrews of Jerusalem, the Ben Ami, um, Ben Israel community. It says that um, Tisha B'Av is not a part of the black Hebrews calendar, but we don't know how accurate that is. And this is I and I video right here, Prophet Jeremiah 16, verse 14 to 15. John live um, black Hebrew unity and exodus out of the north, the USA country. You over know, that's a vid from um June or uh, July twenty ninth, uh twenty eleven, about thirty nine or so minutes. So this is some of the links right here that we wanted to um recommend before we um go into any more um study or presentation on this. Just get a get a um a, a rhema word, like a right now word, you understand, know for the I and the mall. This is also uh, interesting, um, YouTube's vid, 2012, Zion Olympics coincide with Tisha B'Av, destruction of the temples. You understand? So that's also a very interesting connection. There was a couple of other pages um, that we um, probably have to, this is also an interesting page here, but let us see if we can um, go back um, go back one um, 
frame and see if we can get 2012. There's one particular article that we really wanted to get into, but we wanted to at least um, show a little bit of this particular article right here. So this is some of the, you know, the various different um, pictures and, and, and images right here um, that come up on the Tisha B'Av. But if you look on the 20, let's see, let's go on the 2012. Let's search that on the 2012 and um, uh, look at the uh, images. I want to see if I find this one particular page. All right. Okay, some of these images look familiar. All right, let's go down here. Um, you see there's that, that picture. That's a, a little larger picture right there. You know, saying the so-called Zion Olympic Games, so forth and so on. Touched on that a little bit. Let's see if we find this page. Um, okay, here it goes right here. It's this page right here. Now, if you look at this, this is a very um, well-known, um, I think this is somewhere in Rome. This was actually, I think, Vespasian um, and uh, Titus. They're the ones who, uh, who uh, destroyed uh, Jerusalem and demolished the temple. And here you see them taking some of the holy utensils, you know, send back to Rome as spoil of, of, of battle, right? And they, they often say, well, what you don't see in any of this is the Ark of the Covenant. You don't see an Ark of the Covenant in any of this. Um, some of that now links with also Ethiopia, so forth and so on. But let's click on this page. Let's go to this page for a moment so you can get to see this page. That It's um, Parables Blog. And it's speaking about Babylon rising. It's the part five, and it's Tisha B'Av and the rise of the dragon. And, and in a prophetic sense, I think this page is really extremely um, interesting, especially because it does focus on the parables. You understand? Know, if you check out on our study page, we have the Imeros, the majority of the Imeros, where we're focusing mainly on the thirty. You understand? Know, on, on thirty of the parables of the of the Mashi. Yesus of the Moshiach, Yehoshua, Yeshua, Jehovah's of Nazareth. And Psalm 78, verses 2 to 4 says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. We will not conceal them. We will not conceal them. So this article right here is actually from Wednesday, February 22nd, 2012. So you can see it's a, it's a little bit dated right here. It's not like some of the other articles which are more recent. So this speaks to Babylon rising, part five, Tisha B'Av, and the rise of the dragon. Quote, when Av comes in, gladness must be diminished. And this is from the Mishnah, the Tanit 4 and 6. Um, that's one of the, the teachings, you understand, in uh, Judaism. So now we, here we have um, the Roman general, what we were looking at before, the Roman general um, Tito or Titus after the sacking of Jerusalem, after the sacking of Jerusalem. Now there's a note that the author gives, Joseph uh, Herring, he gives, a, he gives a little note here. He says, the following information is presented that Christians might understand the day in which they live and the events that must shortly take place. There is no more um, calamitous date for the people of God than Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of the Hebrew month of Av. Um, Jewish... Um, History, it records the following events befalling the people of Yahweh on this date. And I love when one's, you know, put in that W there. Some still persist with Yahweh, you understand, but actually that leads to Jove or Jove, like by Jove, you understand, which is a, 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 a false god. So it's Yahweh, you understand. Now this gives a, a, it gives a list of, 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 of dates. Now, 70 A.D. Is, is really important to us as the black Jews, as the Ethiopian Hebrews, because that's when the second temple was destroyed by the Romans under the command of Titus on the 9th of Av. Over 2 million Hebrews, you understand, 
um, black Jews predominantly were slain, and one million were deported throughout the Roman Empire. More than 100,000 were sold as slaves, fulfilling the words of Yeshua. But there were, there's also many, an uh, untold number, that fled into Africa. And this is what, um, from Babylon to Timbuktu, gives us the other half of the story. Because we know within some forms of Christianity and um, Judaism, there is that, that, that lie of the devil. You understand that basically, you know, the Satan throws this, this racist enmity, his enmity against Adam, his enmity against the original black man created in the image and after likeness of God from that red clay, that rich soil. You understand that, that Satan now th throws that enmity amongst those who are inclined to white supremacy. Now, now, it's nothing all white people are into white supremacy, but they are unconscious. This becomes almost an unconscious desire when they do not become fully conscious of this. This is very important in the ministry to, to understand this. You have to understand this particular um, significant fact and element. So let us go on with Parables blog, We're going a little bit over time, but I think it's necessary for this Tisha B'Av. You know what I'm saying? Because this is probably the first time that we really um, are probably teaching this more squarely to really help I and I to comprehend why it is so significant. You know what I'm saying? So now Yeshua, he said in Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 to 2, Adonai said, it said, Then Yeshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yeshua said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, Amen, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, many of the Jews, the Hebrews, you understand, whether the seed people, or even the converted Chazars, what they often neglect is the key, and the key is Yeshua. You know, and the key is they speak about the Moshiach, but they don't recognize and receive Yeshua because they can receive Yeshua. And they read this in Mateo's um, Wengel in the Gospel of Matthew. You know, it makes perfect 